The top left hand side, we have our Blue Protoss play of this best of nine. It is parting. And the bottom right hand side, our Red Terran player from Kaizy Gaming is Innovation. First game of a best of nine series here. This is a show match from the Alpha Pro series. It was number 200 in case you're looking for more info on it. And of course, if you're watching this on YouTube, hello! Um, do one of those casts on Twitch today where we're casting some stuff ahead of time for YouTube because, well, why not, basically? So if you're enjoying the games, if you enjoy the cast in the end, do hit that like button on the video. It takes just a couple of seconds, goes a long, long way. And don't forget, you can also support the channel by hitting that subscribe button. We are approaching, slowly but surely, we are approaching 30,000 YouTube subs. So thank you so much for all the love there. Let's keep on pushing. Let's get there. And uh, let's have a ball of time while doing it. As we get this up, we get this running. And we get this underway. So a best of nine starting on Death Aura. Innovation part in the last few times they have played, I feel like, has been a, such a, a volatile matchup. I, I cast them not so long ago, a few days ago, and Innovation just kind of bopped part in a couple games in a row in the Gold Series Team Championship. I'm pretty sure the time they played before that was actually Innovation kind of getting bopped by parting. So it's been a little bit of a love-hate relationship between these two. I feel like it always is. They just kind of trade series back and forth. It's a hard one to predict. You know, sometimes Parton's style really matches up well and works wonderfully. Sometimes Innovation just defends Parton's nonsense and he just pushes across the map and EMPs some stuff and wins the game. So, um... Yeah, really cool, really cool stuff as we do see a command center on that natural expansion from Innovation. And this is going to be the probe set now to build a Stargate on the right-hand side. So Stargate will already build. This is a one base Stargate too, so as Innovation comes in... He's going to see, okay, well, not really much of anything in this main base. He's going to realize there's only one pylon, no nexus at all. So Innovation is already going to realize here that this is a bit of a something, and he's going to see it with the Reaper. I mean, that's massive. It's actually close enough to the base where it's kind of scary. The units may be moving out to deny it. Innovation builds, I love the position of the factory, the factory in the back here. Obviously, the idea is this is looking like it's going to be Void Rays. And if this is going to be Void Rays, Innovation wants to make sure his factory is in a safe position where he doesn't have to, you know, defend it as much. So that seems to be the current plan. React on the racks. Uh, what if it's just an Oracle first, though? Okay, it is going to be a Void Ray. I was going to say, what if it's just an Oracle first? There actually really isn't any anti edges just yet, but I guess... I guess you can do some kind of damage control and try and buy some time. Innovation? I don't think he's going to be able to finish up the natural. Uh, 68, 69. I actually think it just doesn't finish. So, new SCV moves down. That should be able to finish this up. Okay, that's important. So, he doesn't have to cancel the natural expansion. Even if you just morph into an orbital and drop the mules, right? You know, that's that's already kind of a benefit. Uh, he's going to lose his first marine, though. Innovation loses a marine. Okay, there's not going to stop this void ray. This is kind of ridiculous. It's like, this hits so quick. Innovation's like, question mark. Wow, wow. Innovation just drops the question mark and the GG. And uh, seems to think that that's just... Um, that's just going to be it. Three minutes for our first game. An epic start to the best of nine. Uh, part and rallies a <laughs> Voyager into Innovation's main, and that's going to be it. Wow. A second map, hoping for a few less Voyagers, perhaps. In the top left-hand side, our red Terran player is Kaisy Gamers Innovation. And Parton goes for 12 pylon once again. He's our blue Protoss in the bottom right side of the map. 12 pylon, so that's already looking for a very quick gateway. And again, that's very indicative of some very quick tech. Hmm... Well, Rax is going to go down from Innovation in the main, I guess. And so far, I mean, there's no probe on the map, so that's something. Well, I'm just staying in his own main. I mean, obviously, early gateway means you can get an early unit across. It is submarine, so it's a small map. And it might just be just getting the Adept across as soon as possible to try and disrupt the natural expansion. That's definitely a possibility here. As that probe shows up, just coming through. Our rack's going to be done in just a couple of moments then, and obviously gives you that production possibility as the probe of piling all the way up to the top side. He is going to proxy the pylon. 
Wow. <clears throat> I mean, like I said, it is kind of a shorter map, so you can get across here pretty quick. I guess let's see what Innovation does this time around. He is SCV scouting, so he will realize once again, one pylon in the main, no Nexus in the natural. Those are both signs that there's something a little bit aggressive going on in these early stages. So he's already going to get a little bit of a scout on that. As parting wants to maybe drop a Stargate. There it is, a Stargate going down. Yeah, SCV scouts, and I mean, now the Reaper, he's going to go out this right-hand side. So Innovation, let's, I mean, perfect opportunity to see how Innovation changes what he's doing, right? Sees the shield battery, instantly sees the pylon and the Stargate. So he gets to see it pretty much right away. So now Innovation knows. And let's see what Innovation changes up about this. I will say this is a replay from like, I think it's like a week or ago. So it might be that this is very close to when the Void Ray patch hit. And that this is maybe a little bit less, you know, Innovation doesn't quite know what he wants to try and do against it. He's got a bunker low ground, no reactor. The fact is, as well, no reactor means you get your factory faster because it's 50 gas. He couldn't put straight into the factory. I'm actually showing you the engineering bay. But yeah, factory actually goes engineering bay as well and keeps the natural. So a little bit of everything then. So yeah, I guess you're going to rush out turrets here and uh, Marines. I'm in a little bit of a scare, scare point here for these Marines as the Reaper is going to get the adept kill, though. Oh, no, the Marine blocked the Reaper. Okay, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, so no reactor on the barracks. I do think that makes a lot of sense, like we were kind of discussing between the games. I think that's one way to do this. Missile turret on the uh, front and one in the mineral line. So, yeah, he can actually afford those. The only question is, can he push this void ray back initially, like right now? Probably, hmm, probably not just yet, right? And that's the issue. Now your barracks is in trouble. Good news is your cyclone's on the way without too many issues. So... Cyclone is on the way up as this depot goes down. Marines coming in in the adapt. Push back a little bit. Void Ray continuing to target the depot right here. The adept, this one shading up into the main. He's going to try and get a turret here once again as he thinks he can kind of fight this. But now there's a second Void Ray out. Well, the Cyclone is about to show up. And obviously the Void Rays do have to back away quite a bit to get to the shield batteries from this position. That's the SCV. I mean, innovation. It's kind of a weird spot because there's such a wide area of the main base. You have to defend with this. There's that cyclone getting the lock. And you can't lose the cyclone here. So you have to make sure you're very careful with the cyclone. You don't get too aggressive with it. You can't let it get targeted down by the voids. And it will go down super quickly. If it gets targeted... Well, now the voids commit very far in. But if they don't go down... No way. They're going to survive. Can you cut them off now? They can just go all the way down the bottom left, right? It does give Inno some time where these voids won't attack, though. I mean, that is a win off this as he goes Magfield Accelerator. This Missile Turret is actually going to fight back against the Void Ray. The Marines know what they want to try and do. They try and catch the voids, but now they're out on their own. Innovation trying to get clever, but Parton's going to catch him. And he's going to get in a lot of trouble here all of a sudden. And these Marines are struggling. Bunker at the front's going to salvage. He's going to give up the natural, it seems. As he might finally get the bunker up in the main, he kind of needs to repair this missile turret as well. Problem is, there's four Void Rays against, uh, you know, a Terran defense, which has just been killed off multiple times over already. Oh my god, Submarine, Submarine. I can't believe we're seeing cheese in Submarine. This bunker goes down as... I mean, there's just no way to stop it. Innovation not even pulling SCVs to fight it, in a way. Maybe he just wants to defend over here anyway, near his production and so on. He's got a second Cyclone. Mag this also forces the voids away from the shield batteries, and Magfield is very good as he forces a void ray re recall home too. Uh, Magfield will do just so much extra damage to these void rays, so you can kind of defend here with the cyclones. I don't think that's impossible, but he just lost another one, so... Oh, is anything going to go right for innovation with this? It feels like he's just lost too many units, and that's the issue. This is where it gets out of control. The fact he wasn't able to kill a single void ray in all this time... What's Magfield going to do if you've only got two Cyclones? Well, it'll still do a lot. But again, will it do enough? Another factory in the back here trying to come up. Missile turret killed off again. Ten seconds until Magfield Accelerator. In just a few moments' time. Oh my god. Cyclone just gets deleted. Turning around. A few of these SCVs going down. Uh, Void's going to regather up. Apparently this. I don't know what this Void was up to, but it got into some trouble. Gets healed up, though. Maybe he got in a fight with the turret on the natural. I don't really know. The fact that Stalkers are now showing up is definitely problematic as well, though, because now Stalkers can obviously fight against those missile turrets. These voids may be ready for a fight in the upper left side. Another couple Cyclones looking to try and fight it. Ah, missile turrets going in. He does get a Voidry kill. That's the first Voidry he's killed in the game. 
Is that enough from innovation? I get the feeling that he's going to lose the Cyclones and lose the game in a few moments because I just don't see how he realistically... Yeah, I mean, as soon as the Voids get uh, on top of the Cyclone, it just dies. He loses another Void Ray. Yeah, but I mean, now there's a Stalkers here and there's nothing to really fight the Stalkers and that's the issue. Innovation has spent so long preparing against Void Rays. And now he doesn't really have an answer to the Stalkers. I mean, the Cyclones are kind of an answer to the Stalkers, but if they're locking onto Stalkers, they're not locking onto Voids. So it's like you kill one or the other, and that's kind of, you know, again, the problem. As Innovation is going to die a painful death here, apparently. Parton, uh, his new best friend, is the Void Ray. And he's going to use it to its max. I mean, Parton is the kind of play you expect this from as well. No surprise. If I had to name, like, one player to abuse Void Rays, Parton would definitely be, maybe not my first choice, but one of the players that would cross through my mind. And uh, this has been Void Ray, Void Ray, Void Ray so far in this best of nine. Obviously, we're only two games deep. I never apparently had the score up. It is 1-0 for Parton, of course, after that first game was very quick. Ooh, I mean, Cyclone's trying their best, but again, we're just at this point where these Void Rays just delete things. Parton playing... I feel like Parton's playing very safe as well. I actually think Parton can just activate his Mac on top of the missile turrets and just go for it. Uh, he kind of loses the voids, but then the stalkers are just going to kill everything else. Innovation, I feel like that's a question mark, which is um, not real. I mean, I feel like Innovation did throw away a lot of units there. Question mark into GG. And Innovation is going to drop another map here as Parting takes the 2-0 lead. Parting off on a runner. He's, uh, he's off on a good start. In the best of nine, going up 2-0. Got to feel good, but there's still a long, long way to go. So a lot of questions about about Void Rays and uh, Void Rays being maybe, you know, what's changed. Just, so just in case you didn't know, Void Rays basically became cheaper and faster. So they became cheaper, they became faster. And they, I think they build a bit faster. Is that true as well? I think it might be all three. They really kind of gave the Void Ray an overall buff to be a bit more of a support and unit. And, well, they're seeing a bit more play. As in the bottom left side, is our Blue Terran player, Innovation. And the top right side, our Red Brothers from Dragon Phoenix Gaming is parting. So yeah, it really is a, um, it really has been, they just kind of changed a bunch about them in all honesty. So they build faster, they're a bit cheaper, they move a bit quicker, and, uh, they're just, in that case, they're just better, right? And what we've seen in most matchups is that they've, um, in most matchups is that they've been a generic kind of like, you know, for example, in PvZ, we've seen them be like a one Void Ray opening. In PvP, we've seen a few Void Ray styles, but nothing that anyone feels is OP. The one thing that really got buffed with them that really became prevalent again is a lot of these Void Ray cheeses. But like I say, I think, I think this series was played kind of close to the patch of the Void Rays. And so I imagine this is innovation who's just not really practiced much against them yet. And he's still trying to figure them out. Because I know nowadays everyone's a bit like, oh yeah, they're not that bad, right? Like it's holdable, it's doable, you know? So, um, yeah, I, I honestly, I kind of like it. Like I, I like the way we've seen the Void Rays a little bit more. Gives Protoss a couple of extra options in PvZ here and there. I like it. Nexus drops down on that Nat as we do see the probe coming in. Nibble and SCV. Commands on the natural and the Reaper pops out. Is moving onto the middle of the map. So Reaper into the center. He has this probe. Is going to come through and drop down a pylon. So dropping down a pylon over there. The barracks, second one in the main base here from Innovation. Also getting that up and running as Inno just continues to the upper right hand side. So yeah, there's Reaper from Innovation moving up. And just going to have the Adept is going to shade around. And uh, is actually going to be able to push this Reaper back. So no surprises there. That's kind of standard. Uh, I was going to say the biggest surprise is there's no proxy target on the map. But there it is, dead center. This time off a Nexus. So it's a little bit different. Ooh, Innovation sees the probe coming in from over here. I wonder if that gives it away a little bit. He is checking around. He's going to check closer to his base initially, though. And he's not going to quite see it yet, but I don't think it's impossible that he scouts up here. And he's going to go back up the right side and toward the Protoss base. Slightly unfortunate. He gets so close. Well, 
Innovation, obviously, this is going to be a, a Stargate play that will then obviously come a little bit later on. So it will give Innovation a bit more time to set up initially. Of course, Parting will have a base behind it, so he's going to have a bit more economy of his own. And it is just going to be an Oracle to begin with, which makes a little bit more sense than a Void Ray. Very hard. You know, Void Rays are typically the earlier they hit, the better it's going to be Oracles. They can still show up and be a bit of a surprise, you know, early off a proxy. But um, I think this is going to be otherwise... Pretty okay. There's a few extra marines popping out. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things where the oracles have a lot more use after, right? Whereas if you start building void rays now and they don't get much done, then you're kind of stuck with some void rays. Um, which is less than ideal to say the least as the stalker gets in here, picks off a reaper, uh, which is going through for a scout in the main. Doesn't see much information, so I wonder what innovation might be thinking. He just split the marines nicely to defend against the oracle. Yeah, that's nice. He actually goes into three racks early, which is kind of a, a unique build on its own, but he's going to have a lot of Marines, so it's actually very well set up against this Oracle play. This is going to be another Oracle, and then into the Twilight Council. So, yeah, into that Twilight Council. And other than that, just kind of thinking what else we got going on here. Not a lot, really. Just Stimpak about halfway done. Factory going to finish up in the main base. of extra gates from parting just going to be continuing in the front then third next on the right hand side and you know, the oracle pops out is going to make its move into that main as these marines continue to set up fact you're going to move for reactors starboard builds another couple marines coming forward as well scaring that oracle out there so oracle will get chased away and this one around the bottom side it's going to be glaives the follow-up i kind of like that so it's not going to be blink i like that change up Definitely keeps innovation guessing. Get, definitely keeps him trying to figure out what exactly is going on here. He's a few marines pushing that oracle away. And yeah, combat shields coming through. The plus one attack upgrade coming in. Starport about to complete. Just going to see our units just continuing down through the middle of the map then as... We'll see a robotics facility building on the left hand side uh building the main it's the gateway building on the left side we really are just setting up aggressively here from pine all of the aggression i mean defensively i don't mind it for you know the only thing i'm worried about is this is pure marine against the adepts usually against adepts a siege tank goes a long way because of their natural tendency to clump up widow mines can do very well against them as they shade in they all get clumped up to pure marine so it, it kind of begs the question i guess in the end of can the Marines just out DPS the Adepts? Because the Adepts will get to a number where they just overrun the bio. But if they can, you know, if there's enough bio here just to shoot the Adepts down, I mean, this obviously seems very obvious, but I feel like there's a point of Adepts where they just aren't going to kill anything at all. And there's a point of Adepts where they're just going to kill everything. And that's a fine line. The great thing is there's going to be nothing in this natural. So this is just going to be free SCVs. But there is going to be the push on the right side. So maybe Innovation can get some counter damage done as he goes up to the third base of the Protoss. He's not going to turn around. Pulled his SCVs away from the natural pretty quick. Adepts are going to recall back home. Combat shield about to finish. Here we go. These Marines, they need to stand. They need to fight this, I think. Super battery activates, though. And uh, with the super battery, he'll have to back away. Five SCVs lost. He does get back to mine on the natural. He's losing even more SCVs here. These Adepts just right click down. A few more workers at the very end. Gets to nine workers killed. Innovation finds the Stargate on his way home, so he gets a pylon kill off that. Nice revelation. Tags the entire army. So is going to be able to keep track of that for the moment. A couple of widow mines in those are in the uh, in the mix with the rest of this. The adepts and the stalkers around the right side. Innovation moving up the right. A couple of oracles keep on patrolling. Robo Bay of Parton in that main base about to finish. And do you see that blink still coming through? Bio from Inno. Continuing to push up. Uh, shield Barry's doing a fair bit of healing right now. Is honestly this bio trade now pretty well. This is what I mean. Like, there's a number of adepts that work well, and there's a number of adepts that just don't work well. And this number of adepts about against that much bio ain't working well. But there's a lot of adepts across the map. SCVs have had to go running again. And Evasion's gonna get a lot of probes himself, though, and he should get this third base. Obviously, the problem is he's denying the third base while part is denying mine on his own natural expansion. Widow Mine's keeping him safe at home otherwise. And he needs to get rid of these Stasis Swords. He can't really... He can't run into the Stasis Swords. He should be aware of the potential for Stasis... No, that's not good. 
because that gives the Adepts the advantage they're looking for. It's actually almost better right now if he runs into the next Stasis Ward, because then at least he's got all of his units safe for the same amount of time, more or less. These Widow Mine Shots somehow don't really get any splash damage done. Man, even this little bit of Barrow, these few Marauders are just being healed by Medivacs, and they're doing pretty okay against the Adepts. We've got reinforcements still coming across the map. Adepts have made it in the main. Innovation is no longer mining. And a Colossus shows up. What a time for some splash damage to join the fray. This time, Innovation deals with that Stasis Ward nicely. And still pushing through the bio coming forward. A couple extra sentries setting up. Pylons picking and being picked away at. This entire bio army still pushing through. The Oracle's going to activate and they're going to start going crazy. Widow Mine's being picked away. Or picking away the Oracles. Innovation's army is still pretty powerful here. I'm just worried that it's getting low on HP. The Medivacs are low on energy. He needs to get rid of the Colossus, but the pros will buy time. Getting into the front lines. They'll not let the bio reach the Colossus. Innovation going to make the dive right now, but he might have to go through the stasis or to get there. He's killed off pretty much everything else. Nice dodge of a Widow Mine amongst all this chaos. There's still a depth in Innovation's main base. Do not forget, Innovation is all in with this. He's going to lift up. He's going to drop on top of the Colossus. There are a super... Oh, there is a super battery available, though. So the Colossus... Well, it goes down in the end, but the extra adept showing up and innovation I just don't think has the numbers to stick around. And it's passing will hold. In the end, GG. Wow, he only just managed to uh, hold though, didn't he? That was that was pretty close. Innovation drops to an 0-3 score in this best of nine. I hope this is not one of those best of nines that just runs away from one of the players. You know, 0-3 down, best of nine. It feels almost impossible. You've got to win five games out of... You, know, you can only drop one more map and still win the series. So you've kind of got to go 5-1 from here. The only good thing is I would say Innovation's obviously cottoned on to the fact that, you know, Parton is kind of realizing, oh, hang on. Yeah, you, know, you know, he's kind of like, hang on a second. Like, Parton's playing very aggressively. And I think everyone knows that's how Parton plays, but he's getting an insight into how Parton is playing, right? A lot of proxy Stargates, a couple of tricky builds after. I think that's maybe something Innovation can adjust to after a few games here. So maybe that it's not like innovations getting beat down in like long macro games. I think if that was the case, I'd be more worried about this series just being a complete flop. I think innovation has a good opportunity to maybe say, right, this is what I'm dying to, this is what I can fix, and maybe give myself a better chance going into the next games. As on the top right-hand side, we do have our red Terran player. It is going to be innovation. Taking on the bottom left side, the blue Protoss player is part. And just as we get sod, Isaac 2686 with the nine month prime sub. Welcome back. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Alrighty, so game number four. Innovation. I mean, this is make or break. I feel like you go 0 3 down is already bad. 0 4 down is like asking the impossible. You know, if you're 0 3 down in the best of seven, the reverse sweep is like, woof, that's, that's tough. Oh, four down in the best nine. It's like, can, can you do that? I think we've seen it happen once in one of these uh, show matches that we casted, but it it doesn't happen a lot. It's it's very, very unlikely. So for innovation, I think this really is the time to strike. Uh, really now or never, uh, in my eyes. All right, pile on up the right. We're going to be seeing Parton getting aggressive early then on Eternal Empire. I mean, I, if this if this is a Void Rays again, I feel like I might just title this video on YouTube Void Ray. You know, not even include the player names, just Void Rays PVT. Because that's where we are uh, at right now. There's this SCV coming through. It's a proxy gateway, though. Uh, I guess that's obviously kind of obvious because he didn't actually have a Cybercore down already. I'm just getting ahead of myself after seeing those Void Rays earlier. I'm not thinking logically anymore. He can't possibly build a Stargate, but you know what? Parton always feels like he can find a way, so if Parton wants a Stargate, he can probably get one. <laughs> well, it is a second gateway, and that's obviously pretty important um, to note. Obviously, that's going to be aggressive. Now, what Innovation will see is a, an ex a lack of an expansion and a gate in the main, so it should be one of the things he should be... Uh... It should be one of those things to... Um... You know, where we can get in here and kind of see a little bit of what's going on. And he's going to be able to realize that, okay, 2k proxy is one of the things I could face, but obviously he's probably also thinking potential of another Stargate. So, this is bad. A pylon in the natural. Innovation doesn't realize that. That is something to worry about, because especially if this is going to be... I mean, I'm just seeing shield batteries building up over here, and yeah, Innovation has no idea about it. So, definitely a possible problem is 
SCV hiding behind the natural, gonna watch for when that expansion does end up going up, down. Factory has got a reactor already on it. That's actually something to note. He didn't go Reaper this game. He just went straight to the reactor, which means he gets reacted Marines much sooner. So he gets units much more quickly. Extra Marines getting back there. Just going to be seeing the shield batteries build. I mean, the problem is you've got to get to the shield batteries first. He's going to make a dive for innovation. Oh, that's funny. The, short, uh, the, the other Stalker was being healed, so the low health Stalker actually did get targeted down. Man Center is going to be finishing up, morphs into an orbital. We do have a couple more Marines coming down in the factory. And the main base is going to finish up as well. So that factory going to complete and engineering bay blocking the natural to make sure Parton can't expand behind this. He'll go one base Twilight Council for the moment. Obviously not the end of the world if Innovation can't mine from the natural because Parton isn't mining from his own natural at the same time. So that's okay for now. That's all right. This Stalker takes a lot of damage on the way in, by the way, and... These Marines actually get in range. They're really believing they can almost target fire down that Stalker and out TPS the shield batteries. They cannot, though. Siege tank on the way. This is the issue I have for Pot, is that he's very penned in. There's no way out. I guess he could recall out, but... Mm, he has to drop his natural on the third base location, so that's obviously exposed later in the game. As soon as the siege tank comes out, Parting has to leave, though. And this is basically all he's going to get, a delay on the natural mining. Yeah, that's good. It's not like his own natural is up and running at the same time, right? He committed a lot to make sure this happens, so I don't think it's that bad for innovation. He also maybe even has some potential to counterattack with Marine Tank. Uh, a few Stalkers trying to fight a few Marines coming in. Obviously, I just don't think these Stalkers can really do much about this. Maybe the tank wants to be careful not going too far forward. Yeah. Fine. Still just waiting for energy to recall out of here if he wants to get out. And he's still got a lot of Stalkers. Blink's halfway done. I mean, I was mentioning maybe innovation going across from a million tank fight, but I guess that's actually very difficult when these Stalkers are going to kite you all the way. I was kind of assuming Cotton had kind of recalled back home at some point. He dives in for this. He gets one tank, but he's going to lose everything. Oh, and these Stalkers are dead as well. They're going to run away. The batteries are basically out of energy. Parton just lost it all. Uh, and that's just going to be GG. Innovation will get back on the scoreboard here. And he will take game number four of this best of nine. Innovation fights back. He will not let himself be 5 0 And that's very good news for the As In the bottom left-hand side, he takes a map. Our blue terror in the bottom left is Innovation from Kai Z Gaming. Taking on in the upper right side, the red Protoss from Dragon Phoenix Gaming. It is parting. Game five of this best in nine. It's a 12 pile on a game, so parting is just playing aggression, like aggression, aggression, aggression. Like he is not stopping in this series. It's kind of cool to see them just go like all out, like I'm going to kill you kind of mode. It's kind of, uh, it's kind of fun. Simulator. Gateway. We'll see what's going to happen here early. And we'll see a second gas going down. So double gas in the main base. Getting this up and running. This initial probe of parting will start to move out down to the bottom left-hand side. So off and away we go. We're off on a journey. Do 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 do. Zooming away with the probe. Probably gonna build a stargate right here and then go void rays. Because, I mean, apparently that's just the motto of this series. Nice. This is like a really close pylon. So the pylon here can build shield battery in range of the void rays attack in the main. Again, I actually like the adjustment of the Reaper just not being built and just going Reactor Expand. It does give you more Marines, which should help you uh, kind of deal with a lot of the nonsense of parting. Now, obviously, you lose out on some scouting, but if you know nonsense is coming anyway because of the SCV scouts, who cares what's coming? More units is generally going to be better, right? SCV gets into the main. There's... Uh... He sees no Nexus, and, well, believe it or not, my friends, this is a Stargate, Stargate. 
I can't wait for a party to win this game and the next game with Voidrays as well, and then everyone can be like, oh, the YouTube comments are going to be absolutely fantastic. The the discussion about Voidrays is going to be phenomenal. I can't wait to read all that. If you're, if you're going to watch this, are you guys watching this on YouTube? Do me a favor and please write something nice so I don't have to just read the YouTube comments. <laughs> please. Like, I, I just don't, I don't want to read all about how Protoss is broken with Voidrays. I feel like Innovation just didn't quite have a handle on how to hold this. Well, I mean, we don't know if he's lost this game yet. Maybe he's made the adjustments from earlier. Maybe that Marie, uh, Reactor first opening helps a lot. Let's find out. Our first Voidray on the way. Innovation trying to pressure to fight the low ground. Adept is not going to shade up. Marines are going to be chasing the Adept. They will not get the kill, but he will finish the natural so he can get that orbital down. This is going to be seeing our Voidray coming through. A couple of Marines jumping in the bunker, and uh, Adept is going to get cleaned out. Void putting some damage on those Marines backing away. Other Marines get in the bunker. Void activates his prismatic alignment. Going to take down the Depot. Depot falls. Now this reactor taking some damage. I mean, this is the problem with the reactor first, is that then the Varax is just very exposed at the front, especially on this map of the position of everything. Khan already had an extra gateway, so he can start adding on those Stalkers, which have been very useful to him previously. He had a second Rax. He's going to go Combat Shield. He can't go Stim because you can only Stim so many times before your Marines are basically dead because there's no healing. The Combat Shields will just buff up the health of the Marines and maybe make them that little bit better. Boys trying to work their way around the side of that bunker right now, though, and Innovation is starting to lose some Marines. He's losing quite a few Marines, in fact, and uh, it feels like these Voids are barely even taking damage, I guess, because he targeted down the Adept initially. But honestly, I feel like that just gives the Voids so much time to deal damage here. Now they're just going to sit here. Three Rax pumping Marines, but... The Voids are in the mineral line. These Marines have to come and fight, and I just don't know if there's enough of them. Third Void is about to join in as well, and man, it just feels like Innovation really didn't have a way to figure out these Void Rays in the slightest. <laughs> he just leaves the game. Doesn't even write anything. He's just done. He's just gone. Innovation. Uh, I, I just want to say one more time, guys, that... Uh, this was played, I guess, a little bit close to the Void Ray patch coming out, and I guess Innovation just didn't really have practice against someone as abusive as parting in these early stages <laughs> that really is uh <laughs> that really is something innovation seems a little bit unhappy as parting takes the 4-1 lead so yeah we, we just did some checking between games so if you're watching on youtube an update for you all the series was not played just a day or two after the void rate change it was played like two weeks after the void rate change so apparently innovation just is terrible at dealing with void rays so uh yeah innovation a blue Terran player. He's going to be going to sleep, thinking and dreaming of Void Rays, and he's probably not going to get much sleep if that's the case for sure. Bit of a dumb series, but sometimes you got to have these dumb series to have the good ones coming after as well. As in the bottom left-hand side, our red Protoss player is parting from Dragon Phoenix Gaming. Game number five. Now, this is um, not 3-1 anymore. It's 4-1. It's not game five. It's game six. As we go into Pillars of Gold. And this could just be the way it ends. Um, yeah, it, it really has been a speedy series so far. Quick, aggressive. Void, I mean Void Race is what we just say, right? It's just Void Race through and through. That has been kind of the problem for the most part as we get ourselves going. I mean, he died to Adepts in the third game. But yeah, three of the wins were from Void Race, so pretty disgusting. Fine, Dune. Pretty great at this. Hey, what's up? Enderod. En Enderodry TV. Thank you so much for the three month resub on the Prime. Oh, look. A pylon in the middle of the map. What could Pine be up to? I mean, I guess you pylon here, you shield battery here, and you put Void Race in Innovation's main. Is that the plan? Is that what we're doing? We're Void Rain? Again? Parting, please stop. Parting, please do not. Don't do it to it. No! Parting, stop! <laughs> Don't do it! <laughs> no! No! Okay, I like this. Innovation High Ground Command Center. Innovation moves his barracks into a safer position. He does go Reaper. 
He's then going to go factory, and he will build a marine. Doesn't have the gas to build a reactor just yet. Can innovation find an answer to these void rays? I feel like he knows what's coming, even though he doesn't quite scout the Stargate here. I think he knows. I mean, I like the high ground bunker. To me, this looks like the best defensive setup we've had so far for innovation. Reactor starts up. No waste of time there. And this Reaper's still checking. Hasn't seen it just yet. But I mean, Innovation is basically blindly saying like, oh yeah, I want to step. Oh, this is massive actually. He's going to kill the probe. So there's going to be a little while until the shield batteries can start building. So that does delay the effectiveness of the early Voidray at least. Engineering Bay is going to be done. So you will have the potential to go straight into the end uh, turrets. I actually didn't realize he built a, factory, a tech lab on the rack. So his factory gets the tech lab ASAP for a Cyclone. I like that too. Kind of skipping out on Marines to really prioritize the Cyclone. And he sees the first Void Ray showing up. Nice denial on the probe. That really is a big deal. Slowing down those shield batteries from getting up. All right, well, if Innovation doesn't win this time, I mean, I actually will stand up and just like, I don't know what I'll do, but like, then it is a little bit ridiculous because this is just a blind counter from the start. Surely, in theory, Innovation can win from this position as he will lose his depot on the front because the Void Rays can outrange the bunker. Amazing. Well, the Cyclone shows up. We'll get the lock on safely as well that's an uh, important note as he pushes that away shields are gone so that will take some of the early shield battery energy away let's see if he's just going to repair up this uh, depot now and we do have this reaper from an evasion all the way around that left hand side all voids are going to come in again a bit of damage on the depot cyclone gets the lock on though and picking its way through that void ray We're taking a real beating there as it pulls back around. Might be wanting to look for a different approach. I mean, double turret in the main base mineral line. The big thing is you're going to get up to two cyclones without losing anything. That's the big thing overall is that Innovation hasn't lost anything on the way here. Cardinal is already transitioning away. He's going to drop a Twilight Council. I guess Blink Stalkers. But a second factory up. So he's going to have so many cyclones. I don't think with Magfield, those Stalkers are going to be able to do much at all if that really is going to be the plan. And there is that Blink Star. And I like it for Innovation. I like it for innovation. More than what we saw. but I, I like it more than the previous games, at least. Which is good, because I would quite like this series to go on just a little bit longer. Maybe, possibly. Innovation made some progress. Don't forget, game one ended when the first uh, Void Ray flew into the main. So, you know, now we're on a game number... <laughs> now we're on a game number six. Innovation, you know, we're five minutes deep. It is progress. Progress has been made against the Voids. Two more gates about to finish up here from partners, which you see, you know, pulling back into the main just a little bit deeper. Cyclones here again. Doesn't quite get the void, but he is actually going to kill one of the batteries. And uh, this is not so uh, good for Pine. Any says uh, Pine, which means, uh, pretty sure it means like yes. Oh no, I think it means no. Don't kill my buildings. What are you doing? Probably not what he's saying, but. We'll pretend we can read Korean for a moment or two. Um, so yeah, Blink is uh, Blink is obviously on the way up, and he's uh, going to be seeing the Cyclone continue to put some damage down. I mean, the thing is, you can take the natural safely now. These Cyclones are just beasts against everything that Parting has. Actually, I mean, the Voids kind of feel as though they are very powerful. They can show up and just going to be like able to kind of overwhelm the cyclones still but there's so many cyclones they're going to deal damage real quick blink is going to finish in a moment or two innovation going to bunker on the low ground he's got a turret here as well i mean this is parting his natural is up but he's still looking to deal damage here i think i don't think he's planning on just backing away and you know really playing a lot of macro cyclones getting some lock on pushing those adepts away Hey, that's what I mean. One of these cyclones just goes down instantly. But look how quick the cyclones are killing stuff. The voids just have I didn't even realize the first void raid died. It was that quick. And now these stalkers, well, they have blink, but blink on cooldown? No, he's just not blinking. Hello? Spotting do anything? Well, okay. Okay. Innovation wins a game against voids. Let's go, Innovation. Let's go. Hell yes. All you have to do is blind counter the void rays and, and you're good. Because everything goes down and uh, Harding will not get another Void Ray victory. Innovation, the machine is learning. It's teaching itself to hold Void Ray attacks. 
All you had to do is open with blind voids. You knew. You knew. GG's. And innovation stays alive. Bottom right hand side, our red Protoss player. This from Dragon Phoenix Gaming is parting. And the bottom left hand side, our blue Terran from Kaizy Gaming. It's innovation. Game seven of the series. Well, innovation, has he maybe figured it out? And this is Golden Wall. Right, can I ask, does anyone remember, have we seen 10 minutes in a game yet so far? I don't think so, right? I feel like we've not seen a game make it in 10 minutes yet. Maybe the Resonating Glaive Adept game? I think the Glaive Adept game went maybe close to 10 minutes. It's been a, an aggressive series through and through up until this point, that's for sure. Man, I, I, I said I'd cast a best of nine and that would be it for the day, but at this rate, we probably could have done another series. Uh, if I... If, <laughs> I mean, I've had best of fives last longer than this best of nine up until this point. I mean, obviously, Innovation could fight back and uh, could make this work out, right? Could take a few games. Even still, I feel like I've still had best of fives that have gone longer, you know? Then again, we've also had, like, a best of nine. I think Innovation Rogue played a best of nine that was, like, five, three or even five, four. But every game was seven or eight minutes long. So we actually had like a one hour long nine game best of nine. It was ridiculously quick. I remember on YouTube, it was like, everyone was like, God, well, <laughs> well, he feels bad, man. One hour best of nine. And then everyone watched it like, well, I mean, it was like kind of interesting. But it was still only an hour long. It was, um, I think it was Innovation Rogue. Yeah. A couple of SCVs chasing a probe around. As that's Reaper gonna finish up from Innovation, Cybernetics go from parting on the main base, the probe nibble in the SCV, and an Nexus on parting going down in the natural. So SCV is making its way across. Manson is on that natural factory in the main base in the reactor build. I mean, the big thing is there's no proxy. Is this the first game in the series we've had without a proxy? I think so, right? I do believe it is. Farm won three games, four games of voids, more or less. Proxy, innovation won one. Against a proxy. Yeah, it's the first game in the series without a proxy. Is Pong going to proxy anyway? Well, no, he's not. She's going to put a Twilight Council down, so innovation... Is actually going to get to play a normal game of TVP. No early shenanigans. Okay, only took us seven maps. But finally, no early shenanigans in the TVP. Hell yeah. A normal game. I'm, I'm a believer. I'm a fan. Reaper gets shot down by the Stalker, as we will see the Adept. Putting some damage onto this reactor already. Oh, well, there is a pylon. I mean, this doesn't count as like a proxy proxy, though, right? Unless he's going to build something crazy like a dark shrine on it. Oh my god, he's going to build a dark shrine at home. Well, I mean, it, at least the majority of buildings are in the main. He's going to put a gateway here so he can go for a fast warp in, isn't he? These are going to be some pretty quick DTs into innovation space. Oh, it was looking like we might get a normal game for a few moments. It looked like we were going to get a normal game. All right, well, second Widow Mine about to pop. And this medevac is going to load up those Widow Mines... Take them out across to the other side of the map. Now the rack's going down from Innovation. Robo Facility coming through. Dark Shrine is setting up. This can be seen. Our Widow Mine's about halfway done here. A couple of extra SCVs continuing in. And that's going to be seen the uh, three racks in total. Three Widow Mines as well. So no Hellions. So he's not going to look for any scouting, which is kind of bad. Usually you go for like a Hellion to try and help you figure out what's going on, especially when you lose the Reaper, but he saw the Twilight, so he kind of already knows, so he doesn't need the Hellion. It would have been nice in this case, because he would have probably found the Dark Shrine, but obviously that's something that doesn't happen every time off the Twilight Council. Alright, well, three Widow Mines around the bottom right. Gonna set up and go for a boost through the main base. We do have the Dark Templar from Parting. Making their way into that natural expansion. So they're going to make their move over there. 
He's what I'm going to go for a little bit of a uh, boost in. Starting to burrow. PGT is already firing away. A lot of these SCVs going down. Innovation was just not prepared for them. He's building turrets. What can these Widow Mines do? I mean, Parton is basically not mining from his natural, and it took a while to mine again from his main. Only three probes lost compared to eight, nine SCVs. And even now, these uh, DTs is getting a little bit more done. This one on the natural is killing depots as well, so Innovation is going to end up supply blocked. It's a painful start for Innovation. No way is this DT maybe going to get a reactor as well. He got away from the turret. He's going to force scans after all of this. He's actually going to get himself. No. No! My... There was no way. That was out of scan range. I actually think this DT should have survived. I mean, I'm happy it didn't because I feel like Innovation might have just rage quit, but, like, it should have probably survived. It should have probably survived. Marines coming in. Gonna get that scan to clean up, but... That was, um... Continue to come through. DTs drop in. Reactor's gonna go down. We're just gonna be seeing this fun little uh, game hop bug when you lose a reactor while stuff is building. Nine probes went down across the map. The Widow Mines got back in and got you got some damage done in the end. A couple of DTs being picked away at. I mean, is there just not the units to really deal with this? Four DTs get uh, picked back up again. Plus one attack upgrade, gonna finish on the engineering bay. Just gonna see Blink continuing through. The Colossus continue to build. And the DT is still just trying to stay aggressive. I like this. Firmino gonna try and drop on top of the prism, but he doesn't have a scan for the DTs. The prism goes down. Okay, I mean. Uh. I mean, we've been kind of looking very much on innovation space. That's where most of the action is. It is important to note he got those nine extra pros with a Widow Mine that we just didn't quite have on screen. Colossus is going to pop up, and it's going to be two Colossi together joining up. I mean, three bases pawing across all three of these bases here, looking to be pretty well set up against a two base. You know, who's obviously taken a lot of damage. It's tough. Inno needs to kind of clear out a widow mine, a natural expansion, or like an entire mineral line with a widow mine, basically. That's five probes pretty quick. The medevac in the center of the map here. We do see the plus one armor, combat shield, concussive shells, all of this continuing to build. A Viking coming through. I'm just going to be seeing a couple of forges from parting, continuing up in the main base. Innovation just down heavily. Yeah, I mean, Innovation just took a ton of damage, right? He actually killed more probes in this game, but the thing is, parling has been on three bases, and he's been safe enough to just kind of chrono boost out probes this entire time. Innovation spent so long running around after DTs. You know, he's been supply blocked because of DTs killing depots as well. There's been so many problems from this game, and now he's really, really hurting. That's going to be seeing the couple Vikings going to finish up. Everything you're going to gather up together. I mean, the idea, I think, is good for Minnow. Just get Vikings and maybe something like an SCV pull to try and end this. But I'm already talking about three Colossi on the map. So it's not going to hit at any sort of reasonable timing. But it might just be his best shot. He is going to go through the bottom of the map. And I like that. Problem is, these DTs are keeping guard. And they are watching for anything coming through this bottom side. Marine and Marauder nearly denied by a DT. But they do get that pylon to stop further warpins. Uh, it looks like Innovation won't even get a chance to attack because it's going to be Parting coming out across the left-hand side. He's going to take the fight. He is down in upgrades. That's one thing to look at here, perhaps. You know, if we're looking for some way in which Innovation maybe has some hope. Problem is, Innovation's on two base and has to scan DTs. There's one scan, but then there's going to be another DT showing up. There go the SCVs. Parting just recalls to the bottom side. He doesn't need to attack. Innovation's going to pull the boys or go for an attack down here. There's just no reason for Parting to make it tougher on himself. He's going to have charge before this hits. His up upgrades are starting to get there. Innovation is the one that needs to do something. Parton is not, and that's why Parton plays back at home and safe. And, well, the one game without a, a proxy to start really wasn't that much better off for Innovation anyway. Maybe you would have preferred the proxy at this stage. 
First Colossus takes a bit of a beat, and the SCV is doing a decent job tanking, but there's a DT in the back lines, which is just swiping through units. Viking still trying to fight. Super battery activating, keeping these Colossus alive a little bit longer. Just don't know how long this is really going to last for. Is everything joining up together? Innovation looking to fight. Just going to be going for this. I mean, the Viking count is decent, but there's so many batteries. DTs that there isn't scans for. GG is called, and that's going to be... Part and taking it five to two. I, I sound a little bit despondent because it was kind of a sad. I felt like we would do, do at least one really cool back and forth game, but man, part and actually just was better than innovation in this series, straight up and honestly. Um, a weird series, a weird best of nine with so many kind of weird games involved, but um, it was fun to see something so weird, I guess, and that's kind of the positive I'm going to take from it. GG's. Parting five, innovation two, and thanks for watching.